and that's the plug out. This is a review of my chainsaw. It's a Makita UC4030A, they still make them. You get these things for, uh, I don't know, about 160 quid, 150 quid if you're lucky. Um, I've had this particular one now for about 10 years. So I had the oiler get stuck on this and what I did is I just disassembled it, give it a bit of a twizzle and then it ran again just fine. Uh, the other thing I had go, um, the way it works is oh, the plug is out. You have to be terrified with these things. Um, the, uh, the chain runs off a sprocket and the sprocket sits in here and the motor is over here and there's kind of like a bevel gear that connects them. Looks a bit like that. Now after nine years of use, that failed on me. And the main reason I'm recommending this chainsaw is because you can buy this. You can just go online. There are two or three different places which offer this part for about £2.50. £2.50 and you've just repaired a 10-year-old chainsaw. I think that's fantastic. And you can just about get all the bits on this chainsaw you can get parts for. While we're here talking about parts, I should also read out the uh, number for the chain is 958-492-656. That is important because I have ordered replacement chains for this saw from Makita and they sent something completely different that didn't work at all. Other than that basic operation is really quite simple. Over here is the uh, oil port. It takes quite a small amount of oil. Um, I use this stuff. So that's the Makita uh, Biotop um, Biodegrades oil you could probably pour. I've, I've used generics as well. I mean, you can pour anything in this thing. Um, it'll last about, I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, and then you need to top it up again. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Try and keep the crap out of it. Uh, over here, the chain runs. The bloody plug is out. The chain runs on uh, on the guide or the blade or whatever that is. You turn these one, you turn these around once every in a while. But like I said, I've been using this for about ten years. I have a spare, it's still not on there. So you know, you you probably don't have to buy a replacement for that. I've I've dabbled with resharpening chains, but uh, it's a bit. I, I think it's a bit of a fool's game. I mean, a chain lasts me. One chain lasts me, maybe a year or two. Roughly, I mean, even without sharpening, so it's about ten square, uh, ten square uh, cu meters cubed of wood, roughly. I I, I burn five, uh, five, five cubes of uh, five meters cubed of wood every winter is what I roughly burn or so. So you know, you you can top that together and see how much uh, how much use this saw has gotten. The other thing I would say with an electric is that the protection you need is much reduced. If you have a powerful petrol chainsaw you need to have really thick trousers the way that the the protective trousers works they have a sort of fluffy substance in it that if the blade comes near your leg that that sucks this fluffy stuff into the blade and uh, into the chain and stops the blade i run this quite regularly off about 30 meters uh, uh extension cable and that works great i don't have terrible power loss um if you cut through wood sometimes the blade will stop and you can cut through wood that's like that big i mean i've cut through wood that's maybe one, one and a half times the thickness of this blade. No problem at all. I mean, you, you, it, it really is very, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a powerful little saw. It does that. Uh, it might, you know, if it, if it hits a bit of resistance, it might stop. That's no problem. Just start it up again. Disassembly then is quite simple. We have over here, if we, oh God almighty, it is unplugged. Over here, we have the, uh, the tensioner. For the uh, blade, you want to have it that you can lift it up, but that it doesn't fall out of the uh, the blade or whatever we call this thing. Yeah, so that's just about right. That's how I run it. And you can tighten it and release it over here. Let's see. Do it. Oh, no, I've got to clamp down and then we've got to release it like that. And then see, that's too loose and it basically fly off. And to release it, you have to push this thing in and give it a twist. Like so. Cover comes off. There's the cover. And this here is the tensioner that pushes that thing forward and backward to tighten the chain. And off comes the chain. Like so. And that's it. <coughs> now the, the, the parts that I use, this is the uh, this is the bit that drives the chain. Underneath that, I have this it sits this sprocket thing. Spare parts for the same uh, for this thing are absolutely everywhere. That's why I love this. I mean you can just repair a 10-year-old chainsaw. I think that's fantastic. Disassembly, 
is real simple. You have a screw there, screw there, a screw here, screw there, and basically the whole front comes off. Um, you, you can also take this off. There are a couple of screws there that hold this comb on. It really is a rocket science. They're not, there's not a lot to this, this, uh, to this uh, chainsaw. Uh, the oiler hole is over here. Let me plug that in. Uh, let's have show you what it is. So if we run it, oh gosh, you can see the oil run out, yeah? Um, that's it. As you cut, I regularly uh, hold the blade, uh, blade just over a bit of wood and run the chain so that uh, I can see it depositing oil. I uh, will unplug it again. So good repairs, reasonably cheap chainsaw, parts everywhere. What more do you want? So yeah, I'd recommend this thing. I hope that was interesting. I'm going to clean this terrible thing up now. That's one of my least favorite jobs. I hope I have a brush somewhere I can brush this all out with. Um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.